Unidentifiable flying object. <laughs> UFO continues to be a mystery. Wasn't alone in space. Sightings of UFOs. Something out there. <laughs> Close enough to be observed. What could it be? It could only be one thing. A UFO. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of UFO No. This is your break from the propaganda, the bad news, the treasonous politicians. Time to get elevated. Have some fun. I went to the wrong one. Have some fun with me and my buddy, Mr. C, back on the show after a long time. Good to see you, my friend. How are you? You too, Ben. Very good. Very good. Good. Quite the journey once again. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Dude, that's why you're here, man. You always take us on a journey. It's going to be so much fun. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming on, man. How you been? You too, man. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm excited to talk about this. I was actually a little worried to talk about it, but it's okay. We'll do what we got to do. Right? Yeah, that's <laughs> so. right. Get it out to the masses. They need to hear it. It's a message. It's going to be really, really fun. I'm glad you all are here. Thank you for joining the show. We are live on YouTube right now, so go check it out. Uh, if you're a Patreon member, we're live there too. Uh, so go check that out as well. Uh, I'm in the stratosphere cruising about 160,000 feet. Hi, baby. Hi. And it's clear skies. Thank you for joining along. If you like the show, be sure to share this episode. Give a nice review everywhere. You can give reviews. That's Audible, Apple iTunes, Spotify. Now you can give us the five stars and it looks fantastic up along about the other 70 or so 4.3 stars that we got. So go check that out. Uh, if you have stories, you have experiences you just want to reach out, make sure text or call 208 208- 477-1288. You can also email I want to believe 115 at gmail.com. Uh, check out all the different ways you could support the show, including Patreon. Uh, get yourself some swag over at the merch shop and uh, and just general PayPal donation. You could do all that. You can buy us a Romulan ale, uh, all those different things that you could do through the show notes. But uh, we are here to go deep. We're gonna dive super deep. It's going to be really fun. So I hope you got your oxygen oxygen tanks. I hope you're ready to go spelunking because we're going into the caves of knowledge, baby, and it's going to get dark. So bring a flashlight. We, we, we've got one. We've got one. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We are the beacon. We are the beacon. We're, we're drinking coffee and it's like late at night, but it's been awesome. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, man. So where are we going today? Well, I really want to talk about um, the infusion of genetics. So basically, <clears throat> excuse me, with science and the human species based with extraterrestrial DNA, you know, this has been a topic that people have talked about quite a bit, but I feel like we can really expand on this. I'm going to take us a ways down. Yeah, man. So we're going we're gonna to go down in this real deep. So, you know, I really wanted to start talking kind of about Let's just start kind of from the beginning, you know. You know how I like to connect dots. and I know, yes. Dude, that's what I said last time you were on. Last time you were on, I said that you can you seem to always connect dots that I don't think can be connected. And I, that's saying something because I connect a lot of dots. And so that, yeah, I know. I, know. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. So, no, I'm ready for the journey. Awesome. Well, so, but I, I think what we should start at is, you know, let's talk about reptilians, okay? So that's really popular. You know, there's been a lot more stuff about that. You try to search stuff online. It's been kind of hard to find or gets flagged, whatever, you know, kind of weird stuff with that. But um, I honestly, from the research I've done and seen all these different things and seen other researchers do this, this different stuff with this, I, I feel that with the reptilians, and, you know, I want everybody to be open-minded about what I'm going to talk about tonight, okay? Because yeah. – this is, you know, this is going to be quite a broad spectrum of category of what the fuck. <laughs> <Right>? like, <laughs> even I used to say that when I do this. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so everybody, have an open uh, mind about all of this, yeah. where we're going. And look, for, for one, I think, I think what we can say is that we like to showcase what's out there. 
make up your own minds. You know, we're not, we're not advocating for anything. We're just saying, Hey, here's what's out there. What do you think? Yeah, just like science, remember, question everything, right? Everything. So remember to question everything. Don't go too far off. but <laughs> And all these disclaimers should be a hint as to where we're going. We're going into yes. some deep places <laughs> that uh, that are, are trepidatious for some. Don't worry, we're not going to have you give away your firstborn and sign of blood at the end of the show. Not yet, okay? That'll not be like yet. episode not three. Not yet. Stop That's it, right. right. <laughs> so now going back, back into this, uh, now I want to talk about reptilians and essentially what has happened with that particular species of extraterrestrial. I have a firm belief that extraterrestrials, greys, were actually native to this planet, you know, that we call Earth or Terra, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that there's also a lot of them out there throughout the galaxy. They're kind of a negative entity race that comes and takes over certain planets. You know, they're a lower level of species. That's why they want to keep us down at a lower level too as well, right? Yeah. So what has happened that I have found is essentially with the, you know, benevolent extraterrestrials is they knew those beings were here. They didn't kick them out because it was, they were here already, right? Because they're not jerks and they're not going to kick you out of your apartment yet, right? So yeah. yeah. they basically said, here's the deal. You guys can stay down in this planet, but you're going to be underground. You're down below the earth, but you cannot show yourselves. So what has happened is with this species, these beings is they have infused their DNA into some of us. Okay. Ah, so what that means is that's their workaround. Okay. (laughs) That is, that's their workaround to getting around this treaty essentially here. Okay. Let me ask you something real quick before you go any further. Let me ask you this. So when you said earlier that, um, you know, that things are blocked, things are hard to find, things are buried, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, I found that I have to use, I have to use, uh, uh, web browsers like brave, uh, Mm -hmm. to find certain things. So is there a Mm -hmm. web browser you recommend? I know this is a little off topic, but before we get too far in, is there a web browser you recommend so people, if they want to research this type of stuff, (laughs) excuse me. Well, you know, I was using DuckDuckGo a lot, but it's kind of gotten. Yeah. (laughs) It's gotten locked out. That's the problem is all these different sources are getting, you know, culminated into one thing, essentially, you know, the corporate capitalistic we live in, right? Yep. Um, So it is harder. I use that quite often. That's kind of what I go to. Um, You know, I haven't used a lot of stuff. I go to different specific sites. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I've been doing a lot more instead of just kind of a generalized search because those keywords seem to pop up things. It's hard to find things that way. Sure. Even if you type in, like, our topic right now, if you were to look at YouTube, it's going to say an explanation from Wikipedia what these beings are, right? Oh, I so, see. Yeah. See, you know, basically this isn't a proven thing, whatever, whatever it's, it's their disclaimer. Well, here's my disclaimer. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, I get it. Bring I get it. it. Maybe bring it. So, <laughs> so, and that's what, so going back to this, you know, I, you know, I want everyone to do their research. It is harder to do find people out there like us. You know, there's many people out there that are putting out good information Gloss over it, get a general overview, pick and choose, look and see what you need to do, take what you believe. I mean, you know, and I've talked to you too, Ben, about like the flat earth thing. I'm not a flat earther. I think that's like weird and. I just don't know know enough about it. I mean, the whole world's a lie, but is the world that the world we're on is really a lie? I mean, I don't know. How deep do we go with this? See, and that's what I'm getting at with these. Yeah. Supposed conspiracies that a year later become reality, right? (laughs) So. And that's what that's what I really feel like this is important to do your research, figure out what you need to look at, choose what you believe in, but be open minded. Yeah. Like be open minded, right? So we want to be open minded here. And don't fall for so, the propaganda. People label a lot of shit, like a lot of a yeah. lot of crazy stuff these days. You know, like Graham Hancock is a great example of this, of them labeling mm-hmm. his show Ancient uh, Apocalypse as racist. Oh god. So, so there's a lot of shit out there that's being labeled racist by just talking about it. 
you know, so, so, yeah. you know, we're not one of the, we're, we're not shy about talking about shit. You can interpret it however you want, but we're certainly not racist. Uh, no. and so if we, you know, and, and neither is Graham Hancock, uh, but they no. like to peg that on him. So, so it's like, you just can't be afraid to go places. It, it's period. Yeah. It's just an easy term, you know, just throw that out at people. Yeah. You know, I'm a child of the eighties. I never dealt with any of this crap. I know what happened nowadays. <laughs> the world's yeah. all weird. Yep. So that's why we need to be open, man. We need to ascend to this higher level. You know, these other beings are at this lower level trying to keep us there, right? Yep. So and that's where I want to go with this. So with these reptilians, I I think what I'm seeing is, you know, we know the Atlantic the Atlantis story, right? Like there was basically a humanoid species that came and maybe crashed into this planet. They were on the surface. These other beings are down below, right? Yeah. Well, to infuse themselves, that way they can go around this extraterrestrial alliance of the, you know, the benevolent beings, the good ones, right? Yeah. So they're benevolent ones. They're not so good. And what they've done over time, and it basically comes down to these 200 fallen angel leaders, okay? So when I say fallen angels, I'm not going into, like, any kind of exact Christianity. I do look at the Bible though too here. Sure. Because sure. It's a book, right? Yeah, of course. So we need to look at our resources, what we have. We know that things have probably been changed in that book a lot too, because it was rewritten a lot as well. Sure. Of course. But we can look at the general stories, the guidance, you know, you can't change the, the total message if you're open-minded about it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a message there. And there's a lot of hidden texts too, like the Gnostic Bible and, you know, the Gospel of Thomas, and there's all kinds of cool stuff that you can look into. If you're not, you know, if you're an atheist, you don't believe in God, that's fine. But just look and see what resource you find. I, I can tell you right now, if you are an atheist or you don't believe in a God, by the time the show is over with, you might start believing in God. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so basically, these 200 fallen angel leaders, okay, they've been trapped basically on this this planet uh fallen angels basically created what was called giants okay these are these reptilian species they created this race of giants you can look through all out the bible you can look through many a text you can see the smithsonian hiding you know giant bones there was beings look at david and goliath right yeah yeah so i mean how tall was goliath like 10 feet tall or something right yeah something like that yeah, we actually so. talked to uh, his name's Floyd Wills. He was on the show uh, a couple episodes back. Amazingly awesome guy. So super cool to talk to. Wrote a book, uh, Red Hair Giants of Lovelock Cave. And dude, super awesome. He was and he was talking a lot about this, a lot about the Book of Enoch and the and Nephilim yeah. and all, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, but that's what's great is you. I don't think you can ever go over this too much. No, because there's so much to it. Like you can go over it again and again and again, and you're always going to find something different because there's so many perspectives to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's where we can connect all these things too. Cause it seems like throughout all of my research, you know, I've, I really started researching back in like, Oh, I'd say maybe like 1999. That's kind of a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's like a long time ago now. Yeah. Shit, man. Because I remember when the Twin Towers fall, I, I saw that happen, you know, unfortunately on TV. I joined the military. I did my time for a while there. Um, you know, I really started picking up on stuff. I actually had this weird experience I'll tell you guys about. This is strange. So me and my, my good friend, we were in college when we saw this happen. There was a, a, a big storm. I'm not going to tell you where I'm at my location, but <laughs> we'll keep some things confidential. Yeah, yeah. But so... We were we were in our apartment and the power went out and we weren't doing any kind of anything like bad stuff. You know, I think maybe I had like one beer. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't do much to me. Right. So yeah. most people. But once I weighed like 105 pounds, maybe. But no, it's not true. But so <laughs> we the electric storm <clears throat> happened and it knocked our power out. We were watching like the Big Lebowski or some great movie, by the way. It's yeah. Oh, but, phenomenal, the uh, dude. <laughs> phenomenal film. Um, so yeah, we were, you know, we were watching this show. Power went out, and both me and him had this experience where we saw like this beautiful, brilliant light, 
and I can't explain this to you. It was almost like this was the presence of like a creator or being. Okay. Wow. And after this happened, and this is when I was in college, I wrote a 45 page thesis studying creatures, extraterrestrial, the idea of fear, all of these things. And I read like 47 books. I think the original thesis was like 67, but my professors said cut it down. It's too much, too much stuff, you know. So I came across all these things, you know, and I've connected these dots till today, you know, and that's that's very important. Like I'm looking at all these things, but we have like all these texts. There's all these things available. You gotta you gotta see what's out there, you know. Yeah. And so let me ask you, you know, a question about your experience. Yeah. So what made you, cause I, I've never had an experience and I, so I always ask this, what, mm-hmm. what made you certain that it wasn't something terrestrial or are you still not sure? I don't, I don't think it could be. Okay. It was so amazing and brilliant. Like it was crazy. Like it, it brought a whole new light, uh, you know, to my, my being almost. It was strange. Yeah. Now, very strange for telling. I haven't told a lot of people about this, but I guess we're on YouTube, so why not? <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not live on YouTube for the first time? <laughs> you know, yeah, what the heck? Why not? <laughs> so, but I love it. You know, and that's the thing is that really opened my mind up to to finding things, researching things, getting into science, seeing how science tells you one thing and then some of it's not true. You know, this magic I like to call it. Yeah, is you know the spoken word what you speak puts things into existence, right? Yeah. So I say, I love you, right? That creates a a positive energy, right? So that's a positive thing. So I can say, I love you, Ben. That's kind of weird, but whatever, right? So, (laughs) (laughs) well, it's only weird if there's true love and energy behind it, you know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, otherwise it's just words. And that's why this six foot distance thing is bad because the human heart supposedly emits that signal, that strength, you know, up out, to about. six feet. Yes. I've heard that. So this is very, see, and this is the kind of stuff I'm following along this, this trail, right? Yeah. So I'm little, little, uh, breadcrumbs as we follow along. And that's what, when I, you know, going back, I don't want to veer too far out there, but, um, with the giant idea with, you know, eating people and like, you know, eating each other and all that too, you know, that was, these, this race was made, and supposedly those beings, you know, if you look at the, the book of Enoch, once those giants passed on after the flood, maybe not all of them did, right? Oh, sure. There might have been some around. But the majority of them, those are supposedly what we call our demons, right? Yeah. Or these entities, but they're in another dimension, okay? Yeah. So this is what's kind of strange about that. And that's what a lot of these, you know, the idea of the occult and this one world government and these groups is, you know, that are trying to basically enslave us and depopulate us. Right. Cause they yeah. want only so many here. If you look at the Georgia Guidestones and, and the, they have to show you what they're doing. Right. Yeah. So think about this story of a vampire. Okay. Supposedly I'm related to Vlad the Impaler, by the way, which is fuck. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> We've talked about him before on the show. Nice. Yeah. He actually wasn't a bad guy either. He's just, Oh, he wasn't. <laughs> Now, well, he was fucked up, dude. He was basically raped as a kid. Yeah, I mean that would cause some issues, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, little, and yes, it clearly but, it did. So, yes, what do you mean well, he wasn't a bad guy? Because, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just when we when we read about him, it it was clear that he was mistreated and and uh, really fucked up as a kid. Had a crazy life as a kid but then yeah. continued to do some really fucked up shit. But you mm-hmm. say he wasn't a bad guy, so what am I missing? So, if we look at the actual story that they've changed with him around, so yes, I could see bad things happening to him, right? But people yeah. can change too, of right? Of course. Sure. Obviously, if that happened to somebody, it's going to mess you up, right? Yeah. And you're probably going to have issues dealing with well, that. Well, yeah, wasn't but... he like sold to his uncle, and then he was basically like... A slave, right? His son, his son was Vlad the. So, yeah. Oh, his son. His son was conscripted, and so there was a war at the time. Remember, his country was being invaded. Yeah, that's right. All the young boys and men, they conscri- conscripted his son into the military. I don't remember which invasion this was. I apologize. The actual full details, but you guys can look it up too, right? 
you know, find that out. But he was maybe you can find something Ben too. But so basically, he was you know probably from what you told me, if he had that many traumatic issues, he wanted to get his son back. So what he did is to scare the living crap out of everybody that was trying to invade his country. Because he had, you know, Transylvania is a pretty small little place and pretty backwoods at the time, right? Yeah. It wasn't much. He impaled people, put them on pikes and stuff to scare them. I know it worked pretty damn good, apparently, right? Yeah. So and a lot of the royals say they're related to him. Nah, I don't think so. Was it the it's Ottoman Wars? I believe so, because that okay. was part of the Ottoman Empire. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Ottoman Empire's changed a lot, too. That whole area, that's with this whole modern war, I won't even go there. <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> literally right <laughs> but so you know and that's that's what i, I want to veer back to is this enslaving of us and depopping the planet to take over right yeah and we can look at the bible if you look at genesis three fifteen, okay yeah it said god punished the serpent and there would be a war between the seed of the woman that's eve evolution right our science term our magic there and the seed of the serpent we are seen as livestock. So, I mean, that right there kind of foretells this idea, right? Yeah. So there was some kind of infusion that's happened here. Um, something like that, this is a really cool little quote I want to I want to read off to you guys. I thought this was interesting to think of. Evil is a faceless stranger living in a distant neighborhood. Evil has a wholesome hometown face. <laughs> Evil walks amongst us wearing a mask. Think about that one, right? <laughs> well, it reminds me, it makes me think of, uh, I mean, kind of a fucked up story in my past is uh, for for shits and giggles, we used to get really high and mm -hmm. read the A to Z of serial killers. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, super dumb. And, but anyways, get all freaked out and shit. But, uh, but it was uh, only a D you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what was crazy to me is how many of these stories involved people that lived in a neighborhood for mm -hmm. 20 years, 30 years, and they were killing almost the entire time and yeah. no one knew about it or they had kidnapped one time and nobody ever found out about it until long time later or, you know, whatever the case may be. But exactly like you said, the hometown face, that really, that's yeah. scary as shit, dude. That puckers my butthole. <laughs> I'm there with you. It's not just the coffee either. <laughs> Although but, it is a diuretic, so, you know, a little uh, tight sphincter isn't a bad thing when you're dealing with the... <laughs> it's a diuretic. Come on. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you know, and that's what... Uh, I, I have to look up the exact numbers on this, but I was reading something once again, and it, it said something about basically like the idea of this occult we're... we're searching of we're talking of right and they said that there's basically I, I don't remember the exact number but it was a, a pretty prevalent number of like satanists in your neighborhood oh yeah shocked like completely shocked and i don't doubt it actually now that i know who lives around me but <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, but but yeah no it's just kind of crazy you know some of this stuff but you know looking at this as a whole, we've talked about these reptilians, right? I'm going to, I'm going to make sure to catch everybody up. Yeah. Yeah. Going to the distance, but you know, these reptilians, so basically they're here, they're on this planet, they're underground. They, to get past this treaty, they've had to infuse their genetics with humans. Okay. So they've done that with a certain amount of people, a small amount of people, and they're losing this war too, because there isn't very many of these pure bloods that I like to call them left, you know. There's certain families we probably know of. We've got two of them with ours, Rothschilds and Rockefellers. Yes. So I and the old Rothschild or yeah, the older Rothschild, his name, I don't know if it's Jacob. The one that died recently, you know what I'm talking about? Uh let me let me hold on, I'll look it up. Rothschild. Hey, maybe we'll get a hit on that one. <laughs> They gotta maybe. show what they know. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm looking it up. I'm not. I'm not as fast as I always. Uh, I always. I always uh, compare myself to Young Jamie on the Jogan podcast. 
No. <laughs> I don't have as fast. You know, young Jamie can't keep up with that guy. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm not sure. One of the older Rothschilds. There's actually a photo of him. And maybe we can find it and put it down in, in the link below or something. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's exactly. I'm making Section. notes of all the things we're mentioning. You know, we can find that photo, I'm pretty sure. But um, Is it Evelyn? It might be. That's like a woman's name. It says it Evelyn is. Rothschild, who controlled the British wing of his family's empire. Yes. For nearly know. three decades, wielding his name in immense wealth and banking, government of where he advised him, died November 7th. And that was last this year? Last year. Last year, yeah. That guy, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there's a side profile of this guy, and he has an elongated skull. Wow. And I'm, I'm going sh- to, I'll, I'll show you guys this picture. I've, I'll find it. So we can put it in there for you guys so you can see what, what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, and that's where I feel like he's got that Nephilim bloodline. There's, there's still a small amount left. There's yeah. a small group of people that want to, you know, take over the world, yeah, get yeah. rid of us. And here's where we're going to dive real deep. <laughs> <laughs> right on. So we're going to jump from this, okay? We're going to take a pretty big ass leap, okay? okay? So there is a group of individuals that have controlled everything from music to science to the banking industry to um, the legal system to the medical industry and they are known as the Kazarian mafia oh, okay that's that's a hard one to find okay yeah so these occultists believe the same thing that they have a a right to what they are and they doubt Jesus and blaspheme against him with their their books. So, and they are not the people that were supposed to be where they're at now. They're not the true Israelites. They were like the Pharisees, okay? These were these priests at the time that wanted to kill Jesus anyways, okay? And so, so this is, now let me, let me before we go too far, let me, yes, let me say this. Yes. There is, when I, because I was looking into this as well when you told me kind of where we were going with this, mm-hmm. and... Uh, when I started digging in, when, when I Googled, first of all, when I Google Kazarian Jews, mm-hmm. the entire first page of Google is anti-Semitic racist yeah. conspiracy theory is how it labels all of this. And like yeah, we true. said, the whole premise that we gave before of like racist, <laughs> we're not, da, 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 certain yeah. topics. <laughs> so this is why is unfortunately in our society – especially now it has become to a point where you're not even allowed to talk about certain things. However you feel about them is irrelevant. It seems you're just not allowed to talk about it. We don't play that game. I don't play that game. You don't play that game. It's like, look, you, we, you want to go deep. Guess where it leads. One of the avenues goes through the Gazarian Jews. So we're going to have to walk through this alley and here we go. You know, it's dark. You may not like it, (laughs) But we're going there. So buckle up. Yep. Yep. <laughs> buckle Put your up. big boy pants on. It's yep. time. <laughs> and I'll keep an eye out for YouTube strikes. <laughs> yeah, right. Hopefully you don't kill me after the show. So I'll whatever. be waiting for the CIA to knock on my door. <laughs> yeah, right. My doorbell rings. I might jump out the window. Okay. That's right. I'm just going to put in one of the keywords for the YouTube video as Kazarian Jews and just see what happens. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Final episode by Mr. C. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and then going into this, okay, so I've looked into this quite a bit too. And once again, I'm going to use this example with the flat earth thing. I don't look at everything like it's credence, okay? Yeah. So I'm picking, choosing, kind of taking my knowledge of what I've read from this vast array of time that I've had to be here so far, you know. It's 2023. Now I've been doing a lot of research Yeah, for 24 years or whatever it is, you know? So and I, an and look, I, I tell everybody all the time. If you think I'm wrong, if you think we're wrong, tell us, <laughs> tell yeah. us if you think we're wrong, yeah. let's talk about it. That's what it's all about yeah. is having a fun conversation. Open communication, that, yeah. Man. So put it in the Solve comments. 99% of the world's problems, right? That's right. <laughs> Damn straight, dude. So, yeah. So basically looking at that, the Kazarian country area was where, oh God, I don't know if I should say this, man. 
do it. Hey, look, look, kind of like we said, it's, it's not Ukraine it's not like was. these are our Jews or our Jews, it's our weird. views. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, we're done already. <laughs> Oh my God, this is too much. Kind of where Ukraine is right now, okay? Oh, sure, of course, yeah. Now, we're not going to go down that road because that's going to fucking get bombed. Like, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so, and we're live, so there's no editing. Sorry, guys. <laughs> hey, no, hey, whatever, dude. It's all good. So basically, this group of individuals, and I'm not saying all people and that's what i want to clarify once again we have another freaking disclaimer because this is the way the world is yeah it's but okay. the true israelites that were there are not in that country that was created by the current world government let's put it that way okay yeah now i'm gonna give you guys a quote to prove my point this is a very powerful quote and there's a video you can watch too hell we could even put a link to the video maybe it yeah. might be removed but we'll try if we need to yeah so Benjamin Netanyahu, the president of Israel, in 1990 gave a little speech. And if this doesn't piss you off, I don't know what will. <laughs> America is a golden calf, and we will suck it dry, chop it up, and sell it off piece by piece. Why would that person say that? Yeah. You know, why? That's that's. I want you to think. Think about it, you know? And you can see all these famous people now coming out. They're talking about stuff with, you know, being controlled by Mossad and different things. I probably shouldn't say that word either. Fuck. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, even maybe Elon has a handler. There's some photos of him getting sprayed in the back. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. There's a bunch of stuff, man. This is – so we're not going to – I'll, I'll tiptoe around this subject. But what I'm getting into is that there's a group of people out there. Their master leaders or whatever you want to call them, I, I have a firm belief, are the reptilian beings. Because we're, you know, this is a UFO extraterrestrial show. I'm going to tie yeah. this all together. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So basically, there is in the Nazis. Oh, well, let's bring up the Nazis. Why not? We might as well. We already brought up the Jews. Dude, I'm notorious for bringing the Nazis into every show. So it's perfect. It's so perfect. I, th I think Hitler was actually one of these Kazarians. Oh, wow, I, I, really? Yeah, I think he was a controlled entity. I, I feel that these this group of people have con has controlled wars for quite a while. And we do know about Operation Paperclip, where after the war, people were shipped over to South America and to the U.S., all the scientists. I mean, this has been like an invasion of, of built-in. The whole thing is, remember, problem, reaction, solution. Create a problem, get the people's reaction, then you provide the solution, then you have control, right? Yep. You have control. So, and these people, they, you know, do blood offerings to these reptilians, these beings, these not-so-nice entities, right? Yeah. That's what sacrifice, and I won't go in too much into that, but there is a bunch of tunnels in a certain country that's at war right now that are being cleared out. <laughs> Ukraine! Yeah, oh, shit. <laughs> bless you. Bless you, my child. <laughs> but, yeah, so there's a bunch of stuff going on with that, right? Yeah. So, well, look, I, no, I think nobody in their right mind is thinking this is what it seems to be on the surface. I don't no. think anybody in their right mind. I mean, you got to be lying to yourself or, yeah. or everybody else if you really think this is what they're telling you it is. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're with me when, when, when I say that, you know, the invasion of Ukraine is not good. No. You know, we're not saying that, but it's no. also not what they say it is. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very clear. And, and, and anybody that makes a, a, a fit over that statement, you're yeah. a fucking, you're dumb. I, I, I don't know how else to put it. You're fucking stupid uh, well, look, by arguing look with that. America. You know, look at our, our country right now. They're shipping all this money over there. Well, we're falling apart. What yeah. the hell is that all about? Yeah, exactly. You know, I won't go too far into politics, but politics suck, religion. Well, yeah, and look, I mean, you don't have to go far to get the politics. That's yeah. why we don't go there because you it's yeah. everywhere. You you can't get yeah. away from it, you know? So, yeah. the, so that's why, like, and unfortunately, with almost any topic these days, you can't kind of – 
not go there periodically. Like, especially mm-hmm. with the UFO topic these days, how do you not get political? A little bit. Yeah. You know, it's in yeah, it's in politics. It. It's in Even politics. There. That's Remember before yeah, the show, getting that, money from the government. Fucking A, man, getting paid. Yeah. But yeah, you know, and there's a lot, there's this bloodline that's out there. And that's what I really want to drive home. You know, these fallen angels, I like to call it, you know, that are, that were here. And if we look at like the Bible and other scriptures from all, all throughout time, there's these entities that were here. Okay. Yeah. We can look at ancient relics throughout history. There's like serpent people, you know, there's, it's everywhere. Yep. We just need to open our freaking eyes, man. Of course. You know? And our hearts, number one, too. I mean, that's the thing. It's like your eyes may trick you from time to time. You know, that's what we see videos. We see things that we think are real. But use your mind and your heart, too, man. You yeah. three things, right? Exactly. That's right. And and you need a clear picture. Like, you can't get all your information from one source. You know, mm-hmm. you can't just trust your heart. You can't just trust your head. You got it. Like you said, it's got to be a full picture. And in order to do that, you need to come from different angles. You know, uh, it's just the way it is. You have yeah. to. Well, you have to. I'm an artist. I painted you a picture, right? That's right. <laughs> so, that's right. That's, that's the whole thing. man. That's right. That's, exactly. But, you know, and with this topic, too, so we, we dove into the 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 bloodline and who's left. And a lot of the Royals were killed off too, that were in charge of the country. This is, this has been going on for a long time, man. This is a battle that it's gone on for a long, long time. And how we win this or get out of this situation, I don't know. You know, I, I really feel like the human species, I mean, even we're doing a show like this right now, I would never have done this probably like 20 years ago. Would you, I mean, I would think about it, but I, you know, I mean, I'll be honest with you, dude. 20 years ago, I wasn't hip to this groove. Yeah. I really wasn't. I mean, I, I, I wish I would have been. I, I feel like I'd be much more educated and informed and, and prepared. <laughs> but unfortunately, it, it really wasn't until, you know, maybe five, six, seven years ago when I really started digging into things. I mean, mm-hmm. dude, even the moon landing, literally within the last year and a half, I've started questioning that shit because I was too, my patriotism wouldn't allow me to yeah, believe. See, I, I have now too. I'm like, yeah. what the heck, man? You know. Well, I, it's from the things that NASA has been saying. Yeah, well, we know it's, who created NASA. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, and it stands for never a straight answer. So it's, it, yeah, right? you know, yeah. What's the other one? Not, what? N-A Nazi? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. But. Yeah, you know, and looking at this, so definitely my, I think my main takeaway is leaders don't force people to follow, right? They invite them on a journey. Yeah. And that's, I think, the main kind of takeaway here. I I want everybody to be a self-critical thinker and to open your mind. Think about what I'm telling you here about these reptilians. I could be 110% wrong. I'm probably not, but that's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Confidence. Yep, that's right. That's key, man. <laughs> but, you know, and that's what, if we look at everything going on in the world, I feel like this is, we're looking at this as a whole picture. We have all these species that were here, and we are a species, too. We're a very excellent species. Yeah. Supposedly, this planet is, like, maybe even, like, center of the universe, maybe. It's just got a, a very important situation to it, this planet. Well, it comes down back down to the flat Earth thing when we say, what do we really know? Yeah. I mean, you yeah, can go, I mean, you can, that's why you can't be com- overly confident about anything. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you have to dig, you find your research, you, you know, like you said, I could be 110% right, you know, but, you know, maybe not. And so, yeah. so that's kind of the way it is, is like, well, here's what it, here's what it looks like. Uh, mm-hmm. And this is what I think is probable. But at the end of the day, it's like, ah, who really yeah. knows? Who really knows? Yep. Yeah, so, you know, that's where I think this whole picture, hopefully I've painted for you guys, is looking at, you know, we have this species that was here. They've been all throughout the galaxy. There's other good beings that can't really get involved. They want us to do our own thing, you know, and they've probably shown themselves several times. We have angels and demons in our our spirituality, right? Yeah. There's both positive and negative forces. Kind of a cool analogy to think about is if you think about a volcano, right? 
when a volcano erupts, it explodes, it has tons of destruction, mass destruction, runs down the mountainside, the lava. Then several months later, all this growth comes from that lava, this nutrient-rich soil, right? So there's there's good and bad. It's a balance. Yeah. And I think that's the same is true with the galaxy in itself, right? There's black holes. They rip and destroy and take away. The universe is ever expanding, but it has to be pulled back in once in a while too, right? Sure. So we've we've got both sides of this war here, and that's going on. But we want to win. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, yeah. I mean, good's, yeah. <laughs> good's got to win, man. Good's got to win. Yep, that's right, and it will. I think it will. You do? So. You hopeful? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yep. let me ask you this. With, with the... The beings, you know, like here, because here's what I think, you know, I, and I point a lot, I point to this a lot with people that come on. I talked to a guy named Timothy Doyle, who, uh, was believed that he was in contact with the, a group called the golden ones, uh, which was an extraterrestrial beings. Have you heard of them? I think so. I, yeah, and so, but he claims to be the only one that gets transmissions from them, direct from them. Hmm. Um, and then I have uh, another guy that's been on the show several times. I love him, uh, Wajid Hassan, who hmm. is uh, a part of the Aetherius Society that hmm. uh, is following Dr. George King, who also believes he received messages from a group called the Aetherians that gave him a message that he passes on. And Wajid is one of these uh, ambassadors of the Aetherius Society that believes in Dr. George King. Mm -hmm. And so their belief is very similar. And however you want to look at it, whether it's reptilian beings, whether it's extraterrestrial beings, whether it's a, a galactic federation, whether it's uh, the, the Holy Spirit, Jesus and God, and the, as far as the Holy Trinity... Where do you land? Do you think it's all one thing that is called different things? Or do you think that these are actually all different phenomenon? I think it is all one thing. And this is actually in my thesis that I wrote. It's called the divine consciousness is, is what this is. So imagine looking at yourself in the mirror for the first time as a small child. Okay, It's self-actualization. In order for this consciousness to have self-actualization, it has to have parts of itself, right? Like us. So look at your own body, the cellular structure. We have thousands of cells, you know, and there's even smaller levels. Look at the galaxy. We've got tons of stars. I mean, we're like nothing if you think about the galaxy. Like we're not even – we're like even – the, like small as an atom level, right? Yeah. Our personal being. It's kind of scary and kind of sucks to think about. But. Well, and then when you look at, like you said, even smaller, the quantum level with quarks and all that shit. D yep. Damn, dude. it's It just keeps getting smaller. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in, infinitesimal, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If that's a real word, I don't remember. I think it is. But yeah, <laughs> it sounds it sounds right. It sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's what I wrote in my thesis, too, was. Um, <laughs> basically everything comes from this original consciousness and that's this idea you can label it God or whatever you want, you know, um, or the heavenly father, whatever, you know, whatever we've used, right. Yeah. As our human tongue speaks. Okay. So that's another story too. These cultists actually have intercepted the Bible. And apparently the word Lord, if you look it up, actually means like a demon. Really? So. And that's been changed in the Bible a lot. Yep. Like, I think it's like Baal or whatever is, means Lord. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I've seen some work on that too as well. But so that's enough. Everything's been infused, man. Well, if you look at, I mean, look, you can look back on, I said look a lot. Uh, you can take a look back at multiple civilizations that have come before us and see how when they were conquered, it was it was a point to erase or or subdue the culture in some way that they were taking over and History that is written by the winners that's right and so it happened over and over and over again and you're talking about a book that supposedly lasted through a lot of these takeovers mm -hmm. and and so how does this book this has been my question for a long time and I don't mean to piss anybody off that's in religion I'm just asking questions but that one of my questions is 
how does a, a text that is this uh, influential throughout time remain uh, intact the way it is throughout all this history that we know other information, other cultures, other history got erased, changed, whatever. How does this one book remain the same through all these? I, I don't see how it can. I mean, you have a King James version. Yeah, there's been multiple versions, right? Obviously, it's not the original version because it's King James's version. And you yeah. know that as a king, I mean, he would have had to have been an absolute saint to not change some things in his favor when given the opportunity. Look at the, the you have you seen that movie, The Book of Eli? Oh, with uh, Denzel Washington. Yes. Yes. Remember Very what good. they were trying to do? I do they not. I, it's been line. a long time. It's an older movie now. So the whole point of the, the movie, you know, the, the post-apocalyptic world, there was no copies of the Bible. They were all gone. But oh, supposedly he had that one copy. That's right. They wanted to get that because they knew that religion had control. Yes, remember? exactly. That's right. Such a good movie. So and that's what we need to think about here, right? Yeah. So that's what, and that's what I'm talking about, like media, music, religion. It's all been infused with this different stuff. So that's where you want to be open-minded, you know? Yeah. And there's a lot of theories. There's a lot of theories about who's in control. There's a lot mm -hmm. of uh, uh, fingers that uh, directions you can point fingers at to show who's mm -hmm. in control. I always, ask, you know, cause I get a lot of people that like to, you know, complain about the, uh, the people you see on TV. And I always say, guys, it's not, a, it's not them. It's not mm -hmm. them. They wouldn't show There's you nothing. those. You wouldn't know their name if they had real control. Yeah. You know, if they yep. had real control, even these people can be canceled, fired, voted out, you know, whatever you, however, uh, one scandal, they're gone, you know, but. Yeah, but the Wizard of Oz. That's right. But, the great Oz that's behind that curtain that runs yeah. that machine that makes them look all powerful, right? Yeah. When was the last time you saw the head, the director of the CIA with a Twitter account? When was the last yeah. time you saw an NSA agent with a with a, an Instagram following? Those mm -hmm. are the real enemy. You know, Matt mm -hmm. Gates and his Twitter following, AOC with her, give me a fucking break. <laughs> These people yeah. are 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 bad news, but they are yeah. not the control figures that people that yeah. they want you to think they are. No. That's, you know, and that's where there's multiple layers to the head of a beast, right? Of course, <laughs> especially this beast that has has had so much time to mutate itself into the gigantic hydra that it is uh that is we we don't even know where the the center mass is anymore. Yeah, well, I'm looking at like Dante's Inferno. That was in my research too, as well for my thesis. Lucifer was chained down in this lake, and he had multiple heads. He had like a head of Judas, you know, the traitor. He had multiple heads. There wasn't just one entity within this beast, right? Wow. So, and you have like the the church, the military, and the banking system. There's three heads right there. The Holy Trinity, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. The symbolism is insane. It really is. It really yep. is. It just can, it, again, it just, it's all so connected. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and look, I mean, to, to, to tie it in a little bit with what's going on right now in ufology and, and I don't want to mm -hmm. deviate in any way. I still want to keep on that track, but I just want to bring mm -hmm. this into it. It's distraction tactics. You know, then, along with politics, and that's exactly why the UFO topic is in politics right now, is because mm -hmm. politics is distractionary and a money grab, and now they're using this, what people care about, they do the same thing with cannabis, they do the same thing with everything that people care about, mm -hmm. they drag it into the political uh, uh, arena so they can just butcher it. And, mm -hmm. and, and, th and then what happens is they get the public so desensitized to the fucking nonsense that everybody's mm -hmm. just like, Bleh. I don't even want to look at it anymore. <laughs> you know, that's why nobody even yeah. reacted when, when the Pentagon announced that uh, they had otherworldly craft. Nothing. It was fucking yeah. crickets. 
Uh, going to get my new car now. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was, was nothing, like, you know, and they're, and they're still the, the supposedly in the government. They're still saying the public's not ready. The public's not ready. Like, dude, we are beyond dude, ready, man. Awesome. People are losing <laughs> interest, dude. It's it, yeah. you know, it's like quit with this. Like uh, Eric Weinstein says, uh, the Lucy and the football game. You know, is is it's quit quit pulling the ball away, man. Just fucking give us what we want, you know. And yep. uh, we're gonna hate you regardless. We're gonna hate you regardless. Yeah. You're never gonna win us back. So just quit trying to gain brownie points and just give us what we want. But anyways, yep. but it just goes into another narrative that they create to gain control. Mm-hmm. And it's very yeah, religious in nature. It's all be- belief and faith. Belief and faith. Yep. Yeah. You know, the longest time people weren't able to read or write. That was control, too, remember? That's right. Only certain individuals had that right. So, that's right. Oh, yes, exactly. So and that's happened throughout history for a long time. You know, finally we're able to read and write, but who's uh, giving us what we need to know, right? Well, knowledge is power. And yep. even back in in early, early tribal days, you can see how they knew that. They knew mm-hmm. knowledge is power, whether it's knowledge of the terrain, knowledge of the hunting grounds, knowledge of the, you know, how to uh, ride horses. That was a huge advantage for, uh, what was it, the Mongolian tribes, uh, mm-hmm. that they were a horseback tribe. I mean, the knowledge of being able to ride a horse and shoot a bow from horseback, that knowledge gave them power to be able to rule the world for a significant amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's here's an example of something current with knowledge is I think the guy was like a TikToker where he had like a pretty common, like um, pretty popular like show, you know, that he was putting out like kind of random stuff. But he was on a drive and he showed what he thought was a giant. Did you hear about this guy that disappeared not long ago? I have heard a little bit about it, but please go on. So basically he was driving in his truck. They were doing a video. It's either on Snapchat or TikTok, one of the two platforms, you know. Yeah. But he was showing a video. There's this giant figure that had to be like 12 or 14 foot tall because he was like way far away. And he could see this thing up on top of this mountain in Canada. And he went back there and the FBI stopped and said, you can't come back here anymore. He was stopped. No shit. So he came back a little bit later and he saw there was military vehicles and helicopters flying above the same mountain. He has that on video. He went and talked about it again. He was made this really weird video that was like he was being like under great duress to talk, you know, in a certain way and debunk, oh, well, I just made this up. But he looked like he was being told to say that. Then, I don't know if it's a month or two later, the guy goes, Dis- he disappears. Wow. That's your power right there. Of course. With knowledge, right? Oh, dude. And, and yeah, I mean, look, you go back to Nikola Tesla, bringing him up a lot on the show of, of what happened to him. He's, he's probably one of the most famous examples of uh, someone whose work was intentionally discredited to be able to be mm-hmm. capitalized upon by his competitors for advantage to the government – and the mm-hmm. and Edison both, but the government confiscated his work after he died, and then you have people yeah. like which you know, uh, maybe he died natural causes. I mean, we'll never know. But uh, then you have people like Stanley Meyer, the water car guy, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that up and disappeared after he showed his work. Uh, you yeah. have you have now a, a great example of a modern day this happening is. Uh, is Randall Carlson on the Jogan podcast had said, mentioned something about free energy work and plasmoids and all this stuff. And he was like, but I can't say much. I can't say much. And then Jogan was like, well, now you got to say it. And so he was like, well, here's a little bit about it. Um, But he, what he had mentioned in there was that people have to uh, research this stuff in secret because of the fact that just like Nikola Tesla and people that have come before him and, and the gi- guy with the giants, they will suicide people uh, yeah. to cover up this this work. It's happened time and time again. Phil Schneider is another one of these guys. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, oh yeah, because he was the one who was actually shot by these beings. Yeah, yeah, apparently. I mean, so, and who knows what he really found. I mean, we'll, we'll never know. But his story yeah. is crazy. And, and the fact that, look, if you had read that to me, and, and I'd never seen the guy, I'd never seen a press conference, I would have been like, yeah, whatever. You know, but seeing him and seeing him talk about it, seeing how he was very clearly, in my opinion, suicided, uh, then it, it adds credence to what he was saying, or at least big aspects of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's funny you brought up Nikola Tesla, too, because, uh, you know, supposedly... This is going to be might blow some people away if they don't know. This. Supposedly, Trump's grandfather was Nikola Tesla's assistant. Yes, weird <laughs> dude. Very weird. Here's another dot to throw at you there. So, how are all these things connected? You know, who are these people? How it? You know, here's a cool example thing about it. whenever you travel somewhere. Let's say me and you go fly on a, a flight somewhere. I end up in. I don't know, Kalamazoo, and then I see you there. How the hell did that happen, right? Why did one person all the way across the world till a field one way, and yet all the way on the other side of the world, that same process is going on? Everyone's interconnected, you know? Yeah. I really feel like it's something that's, and that's what, that's how we win the situation, you know? We have to all come together. Oh, sure. Well, I've said this multiple times. Uh, it comes down to our humanity, you know, I really feel like uh, I had talked about this with, uh, I can't remember who it was now, uh, but I, I think it was maybe Hermes Oslander, where people are willing to just um, throw their humanity away at the slightest inconvenience. You know, and, and a great example of this, and I've used this before, is uh, uh, holiday season in retail stores. Mm -hmm. All right. I worked retail during the holidays for years oh, I have. and it was yeah, absolute so hell. All right. Hell. Yeah. And so, and uh, supposedly during the jolliest time of the year, people are just willing to treat the other person like they're not even human. And for the simplest yeah. of things, a fucking blender, you know? And, and so, <laughs> so we, uh, Oh, I remember what they're it was. We, yeah. Uh, we were referencing rich people, you know, and how difficult it is because even somebody like me who goes out to get a coffee, right. And let's say something goes wrong. I have to go out. I have to consciously think about what that person is going through and set my own grievances aside for a moment and think maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe they're having outside of my, well, fuck, this makes me late or God damn it. This person, how hard is it to make coffee? Now imagine when you aren't answerable to anyone, nobody, you're a billionaire. There's no one around you. That's going to put you in check. You don't, you have yes. zero obligation because there's no consequences to being a dick. So, mm -hmm. so you don't have to, your humanity is easily disposable. And so I think mm -hmm. that's, it's caught on because what do we have? You know, we have a society and a culture that kind of promotes this me, me, me aspect. Well, that's comes down to money that mm -hmm. comes down to this, you know, this selfish behavior that's totally against what we should be. And that's that negative energy. And that's what these reptilians, these beings feed off of that negative energy, that loosh. Yeah. You know, and that's what that that's what this comes down to. I mean, that's the happiest time of the year. We're supposed to spread joy. I actually like to make people gifts for the holidays. That's you know, cool. Or something special or whatever, you know. And, you know, not everybody's going to do that. That's fine. But I think giving is better than getting, you know. It's yeah. nice to get things, but it's like, I got everything I need, man. I, one of the happiest times ever in my life is when I lived in a little small apartment. I had like a... I don't know, 18 inch TV and some of those big Joe chairs, man. I was broke <laughs> as a joke. And you know what? But it was excellent. It was most excellent. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I didn't have to worry about stuff. Somebody robbed me when I did steal my big Joe chair. I'll just go buy another one for 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like simplicity, you know, it's a yeah. good thing. So, yeah. And, you know, negative negativity breeds negativity. And that, I like how you said that too. It's like, think about that other person, what they're doing, you know? Like they're at a job, they're working, they might be having a rough day, you know, that's like the golden rule. Do yeah. unto others as you wish yourself, right? That's hard to do, yeah. especially in today's world and especially with these beings that are trying to run the show. Well, and to stay you know? with the biblical motif, uh, you know, mm -hmm. is 
the idea that, uh, oh, brother, I totally lost my train of thought right there. I had it with the biblical thing. <laughs> oh, 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 we live in a golden calf society. We, yeah. You know, where, where you know, if you if you think back in the story of Moses, when he went up to the, the Mount Sinai and got the tablets, yeah. uh, the, the iPads and came back down to give them the uh, the word, uh, they were worshiping a golden calf. And, and it seems like, and look, the way I translate this is, you know, a lot of people say, well, it pulls us away from the worship of God. I, I like mm-hmm. to think of it as more more domestic, which is it pulls us away from our natural energy. And our natural yes. energy will lead you to whatever makes you stronger, more whole. For some people, it's God. Some people, it's uh, it's it's doing good work for their community. They don't need God to, to be a good person. Some people mm-hmm. do. Um, but either way, it's that energy. And you can see people when they're t- in touch with this energy natural flow this natural energy things go well for them they're healthy you know there, there's a, just a natural energy about this and if you go back to our you know ancient ancestors the the magic that they appeared to have to be able to do incredible things that we still can't replicate could have come down to it could have been alien intervention but it also could have been that these people had nothing better to do or nothing to distract them away from mm-hmm. learning about this natural energy and putting it to use in everyday life harnessing yep. this natural magic that clearly exists as you said in the small particles the quantum that maybe they didn't even know they didn't even know what all this was but they had a sense because they could feel it because their senses weren't pulled away it was they were grounded they were like a conduit for the universe you know, and just like it was just lit. I, I, I imagine like our ancestors and maybe I'm giving them more credit. I don't fucking know. But I imagine <laughs> that they're just like a lightning rod of inspiration. Mm-hmm. You know, to be able, I mean, these are people that had nothing to go off of. You know, like yeah. we, we have a lot of things like I was born into a world that teaches me how to do fucking everything. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're born into a world where chances are you had no one around you. You got to figure shit out. You know, and so just yeah. sensing things and, and picking what are the up great on things kids do because they haven't been corrupted completely yet, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I just, I really, that, that natural energy, I think there's something to it. And, you know, free energy, this free energy concept, you know, that Nikola Tesla had and things like that, it all comes from what? The natural energy around us. And it's powerful, mm-hmm. and and it and it, we're supposed to use it. It's there. And again, to go yeah. b- biblical again, you know the, what did what did God uh, the the Bible say about you know uh, humans being in charge of the earth, you know, and utilizing the earth and and using what's on it, whether it's the animals, you know, the plants, uh, all that. We are we are to rule over the planet. However, you want to take that, you know. I, I like to think of it more of the we're stewards as opposed to tyrants. Mm-hmm. Well, we talked about all this in the Screaming Trees episode. Remember the trees? Screaming the, Trees! The, the, ah, that, one, ah. that was a while ago. Oh, <laughs> damn. Wow. Yeah, so Screaming Trees. We talked about this, that energy, because remember if a tree was chopped down, it screamed to another yes. tree. But there was a scientific study with plants. If they put positive music, yep. the plants would grow very well. They were happy right. that positive energy that... That signal that's out there, this energy, right? That if they played like harsh things or, you know, people were yelling and arguing in the room, the plants would not grow or die. Yep, exactly. And it's all energy. They feed off of the energy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and I so, think, I think, think if you yeah. want to go even more <laughs> physical with that, is they are feeding off of particles and compounds that we cannot see. They are, they are feeding off of the quantum particles and energy. If we could see into the quantum world, we would see these, I would imagine almost like spores, you know, coming off of us. It would just be this constant interaction of, you know, avatar, dude, you know, I, well, (laughs) I recently showed us the bastards. (laughs) I recently watched the, uh, fantastic fungi movie oh, on netflix it. oh it's beautiful dude it's it's the most poetic beautiful census stimulating 
movie I've seen. I was high as fuck, and I watched <laughs> this movie, and dude, it literally lit my soul up. I mean, it was like the colors and the music and what they're talking about in Paul Stamets. I've never been in love with a man like that before, and and I'm telling you, like, it just, <laughs> I loved it. It was so fantastic, and the way that they talked about, as you were just mentioning, the interconnectivity, you know, the mycelium that connects you know, all these gigantic patches in the Pacific Northwest and, and stuff of, of the, the nervous system of the earth. I mean, it, it, there's so many layers to reality. Mm-hmm. And that's when it comes to come back to all the phenomenon and the reptiles and all this stuff is when you start breaking down what is real. You know, we touched on this in the uh, the Slenderman episode, and uh, and you know, at first I'm thinking Slenderman aliens. I don't know, but at the same time, the the concept was these girls that committed this murder for Slenderman believed he was real. Therefore, he was real. Mm-hmm. He literally tormented these girls to commit murder. They had convinced themselves that he was real enough to murder someone else for him. So therefore he is real. And, Mm -hmm. and so what is real? And it it just comes down to, you know, the ancient world, who knows, man, Mm -hmm. who knows what was being put out there into the universe and, and, uh, and who came before that? I mean, Graham Hancock loves to say shit just keeps getting older. Yeah. And as we dig, we find more and more about the human race that how old we actually are. I mean, dude, it's starting to delve into dinosaur territory. Mm -hmm. You know, they found artifacts that show depictions of humans uh, uh, intermingling with dinosaurs. And, Mm -hmm. And one of the arguments is how could a primitive race like that with no, um, no inspiration for that, how, how did they know what a dinosaur was? How could they, if dinosaurs didn't exist, how would they have known what a dinosaur looked like enough to put it on a rock next to a human? Mm-hmm. How did they know? Clearly they were pulling, I mean, we know this. We know that the ancient world used what they had around them, right? The Bible yeah. is famous for this. The, the, the chariot and the wagon wheel in the sky that, uh, mm-hmm. that clearly was not a wagon flying in the sky. Yeah, that's a good book, Chariot of the Gods, too. I don't know if you've seen that or not. Yeah, Eric Von Danigan, dude. Yep. Yeah, great. Great book. I mean, I my thing is with the ancient world stuff is I am far more likely to believe a majority of what was was uh, uh, passed down by the ancient world because why would they lie? But the modern ufology stuff is really hard for me to get down on because I everyone has incentive to lie right now. Yeah. And yeah. there's money involved, there's politics, there's there's careers. Uh, it's it's mm-hmm. it's too um convoluted and and manipulated right now for me to believe that it is authentic. Uh mm-hmm. but but the ancient world stuff, it's hard to believe it wasn't. Yeah, it's hard to believe that these ancient cultures were just talking about myths and legends. Well, like, why stuff is researching? You know, yeah, ancient texts and looking at like you know a little golden uh, helicopter, or a plane. Yeah, you know, you exactly. Hieroglyphics is like a helicopter. It looks yep. like one, you know, or a little man in a space suit. Yep. I and mean, why would they make that up? Why would why we? Would- it would be like us chiseling Hansel and Gretel story into granite. Yeah. What the fuck? Why would we do that? We would never do a fairy tale. Why would we do that? It's the, that we would never do that. What, why would you go to all the trouble to tell a fairy tale in stone? You, you wouldn't do that. You would only, I, I can't imagine a culture. I mean, look, if they did, they did it so easily which means they had advanced technology that they were just doodling on rock, man. They were just doodling on rock. That's the only way that they're putting down fairy tales in stone. Otherwise, like, dude, you're chiseling in stone. What matters? Yeah. What matters? Like you, those you reptilians on the stone, te- you know, stone. Exactly. So, I mean, there's, there's credence to this stuff. You know, this comes from these ideas, the Kazarian mafia, all this stuff. People want, you know, cause of the Kanye bullshit and all that. They want to make it out. Like it's a new thing. This is not, this goes back to what? 100 to 800 AD. 
Mm-hmm. This is old world shit, man. Yeah. And to put them to complained about them even. Yeah. To put that, to put a modern day racist spin on it. The whole fucking world was speciesist. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. we enslaved and murdered and tortured and ate everybody we came in contact with as humans. Yeah. Like what the fuck? There, the world was evil, and it wasn't about evil or not. It was about fuck that guy. <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna live today, yeah. you know, and that's all it was. Right. Yeah. Exactly, it was about survival, and and yeah, there was evil people that came out of that. Of course, it's human nature, but but we have it so good now that we like to be like, well, that guy was racist. It's like, well, <laughs> no, he killed everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody. Everybody. Hit, yeah. yeah, you know Hitler was racist, but Genghis Khan was fucking. He hated everybody. Yes, he did. Yeah. You know, and he's related to like a third of the world apparently. Well, yeah, because so, yeah. he fucked everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, just shit, Son man. Of a bitch. <laughs> Fuck. I mean, god damn, how diabolical. You know, to, I mean. Yeah. Uh, it's hard for me to think that that was just an accident, a happy accident on his part, that he just happened to rape half the world. I think yeah. that was like, I'm going to literally pass my genetics on yeah. by doing this. You know, like, I, you know, he, uh, yeah, I mean, crazy shit, man. Humanity, dude. What the fuck? We're a crazy <laughs> species. <laughs> well, God damn. Not what humanity's supposed to be. Right? Well, that's true. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. That's so yeah, I just I want everybody to kind of open their eyes from this, you know. That's what I when I uh, talked to you and we thought about this, you know, we we're thinking about different things. Like, what's a really poignant thing to bring up, especially at this time in the world we're in right now? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, and that's what think about these beings and different things with this stuff, you know. Yeah, there's there's got to be an explanation out there, man. There's there's definitely got to be something more to all of this. Well, I mean, look, if, if you, uh, well, let me ask you this. I mean, you know, this go, cause I'll, I'll, I'll you know, when, I, when you start digging into this stuff, you run into people like David Icke, you run into people like Charlie Ward, uh, you run into people like Alex Jones. Uh, and I'm not saying anything bad about these people in any way. I'm just saying that, uh, what happens is, is all throughout history, going all the way back to everyone who ever had a scientific discovery of any kind that went mm-hmm. against the mainstream uh, was always, uh, you know, um, dismissed, if not mm-hmm. persecuted. And this mm-hmm. is no different. And it's the whole idea of, you know, uh, when you're over the target, you'll know it because it, that's when they start uh, throwing out the ammo. Mm-hmm. And so all yeah. of a sudden, and they'll use anything, and it's easy now. It's easy now. Oh, xenophobic. Oh, homophobic. Oh, uh, oh, you know, oh, uh, uh, Islamophobic. Oh, he's he's totally racist. You know, it's just you can literally throw any term you want at anyone you don't like these days, mm-hmm. and and that's it. Conversation over. And that's exactly like I said earlier. That's exactly what's happening with Graham Hancock, and and what because he talks about how. A, a ancient Spanish culture is talking about white races. Mm-hmm. He's not talking about, he's not like, you know, no, no, the, the Browns are wrong. It was whites. He's not saying that he's going in their own culture. They mm-hmm. say they met these people. That's their culture saying it. You mm-hmm. know, how, are they racist? Clearly not. Yeah. Yep. And so it's crazy to see that. So, so, you know, again, look, you know, I don't like disclaimers because I'm like, grow the fuck up. Yeah. But at the (laughs) same time, at the same time, uh, people do get triggered simply because of the propaganda. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily that they're triggered because they really feel as though we're saying racist shit, Mm -hmm. uh, but they're triggered because they're told that this is racist. Yes. And so, so then it's like, oh shit, are they talking about racist shit? Mm -hmm. No, (laughs) no, we're just talking. Mm -hmm. Uh, It so happens that other people have interpreted this as racist, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and so anyways, but that's, that's my last name actually means picker of grapes. So I had slave ancestors and probably a lot of people did. Everybody was enslaved. 
everybody a brown yellow white are. red black that we were all enslaved at one point in time you think yeah. the europeans weren't enslaving europeans they were absolutely look we enslave people now in the criminal system well it's, and it's modern day slavery the ones that are behind most of the enslavement of the african americans too well i mean look man i mean it's you know it, again you go back mm -hmm. far enough into the ancient world and you'd be hard pressed to find a culture that didn't persecute their own race. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because it's simple economics. I love this. Hotep Jesus. I don't know if you know who that guy is. Mm -hmm. Great. I love him on Twitter. He's a fantastic troll. I, I and I mean that in the greatest of ways. Uh, <laughs> and so does he, when he says it, he calls himself a troll, a grifter, but yeah. the way he says it is it's pure economics. Why would you go to another culture that's a long distance away to steal from their people when you already have people around you? Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? It doesn't make sense to travel all that way. First of all, you're going to lose half your stock on the way back. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't make sense economically in any way. Travel time was so much harder than it is now. Now you throw people in a van, you're done trafficking, you know, but in yeah. the, back then it was yeah. significantly harder to do. Um, but they still did it. So uh, they wouldn't. They would simply enslave people around them. And, of course, anyone they came in contact with that was lesser than them. Mm -hmm. You know, if you had more men, you had, uh, again, going back to the, the Mongols, they had horses, they had archery when most of the world didn't. Dude, they mm -hmm. enslaved so many people. Yep. Crazy. Yep. And, they, and they were Mongolian. So, I mean, it's, you know, anyways, it's, it, I love controversial topics. I I love well, how, if you feel uncomfortable, you're welcome. Yep. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's what I really feel we're slowly to this day, just in a different way. Yeah. 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 Well, okay, so let me ask you this. So so what do you think based on what you see going on now? Based on mm -hmm. what we're, you know, reading about with elites taking over and, you know, mm -hmm. the, the one world government shit, global agenda shit that's clearly going on, throwing into the soup, the Project mm -hmm. Blue Beam and everything that's going on. The what final do you, card. Yeah. What do you think is coming? Let's say five, mm -hmm. ten years. Do you think we're going to see a staged alien invasion? I don't like to make predictions because then you get freaking slammed if you're wrong. But <laughs> well, I'll make predictions. You just you throw whatever you want. I love to throw predictions out there because I'll, if I'm I'll right, show, I'll throw some shit in the wall and see if it sticks. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that's it, man. Because so, I have a prediction for you. Tell me yours, and then I'll tell you mine. I think there's going to be some major change, probably right before this next coming year. To be honest, before 2024. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay. Changes is in what? Changes politically, changes economically, change all of I mean, it. Ev everything. Everything. Okay. Yeah, cause, I mean, we can't continue on this path. I mean, I agree with that's that. That's what this is crazy. What's happened? I mean, look at like the banks. Look at people are fighting each other again. There's all this crazy behavior. We're being ripped apart in half, basically. Yeah. All our keyboard warriors. I mean, it's just. Things have gotten pretty bad, and people don't want to realize that, you know? Yeah. So I think the that final card, this alien invasion kind of thing, that's their final playbook because their war isn't working so well. You know, they're trying to do that. That might come to some fruition at some point. I don't know. I mean, who does know? I mean, there's nukes <laughs> that are yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why would you want to destroy all the stuff on the surface? And think about these beings that are down below. They don't want to do that either, right? Well, that's true. I mean, I think a lot about uh, like uh, 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 EMP blast style as opposed to an actual nuke on the ground. Yes. So you, you yep. launch it above Oz the... Rockets, Oz problems. Yeah, yeah. If people be divided, throw up an EMP. It's going to cause mass havoc. You're going to have people, you know... I'll throw Bad a prediction situation. out there for you, Mr. C, that'll blow your mind if you're right. ready for it and people <laughs> out right. there. And I'll say right now, I could be 110% wrong on this, but I don't think I am. Uh, so I, here's what I see going on because the U.S. loves false flags, right? Mm -hmm. I, would, I, would, I could see the U.S. 
throwing a nuke above Ukraine, blaming it on the Russians before Russia has a chance to do it to us. Yep. And and that uh, if they don't straight up do it, because I I don't think there's going to be an end to this. It could be another situation similar to what we had in World War II, where potentially there was a negotiation out of the war as opposed to, you know, we won straight up. Uh, you know, I mean, we definitely won when it came to technology and scientists, but so did Russia, so did Israel, so did China. And they all got scientists. They all got technology um, out of all that. So And so did Germany. It's not like Germany... Yeah. You know, I mean, they lost a lot, but they didn't, you know, and then, and then there's a ton of it. Ev- yeah, there's a ton of evidence that Hitler escaped. A ton, I mean, it's, yeah. it's basically completely debunked that he committed suicide in the bunker. That at least we can say, well, that body that they recovered was not Hitler. So you might be able to say he killed himself in the bunker, but we have no evidence that he did because that body came to find out was a fucking woman and it wasn't his girlfriend. Uh, And there, what was her name? Yeah. Ava, Ava Braun or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. And, uh, and there's a ton of evidence that, I mean, that Mm -hmm. show hunting Hitler, uh, which was phenomenal, did an amazing job of showing that there is, if nothing else, strong circumstantial evidence to to suggest that Hitler and a lot of his top uh, officers made it to Argentina, Brazil, Chile, all over the place, and potentially there's, Antarctica. There's towns, there's towns named in German names. That's down right. There, they man. speak <laughs> German. They speak German. The family still have Nazi memorabilia hanging up. Yeah. Dude, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy, that shit. So, so look, yeah. it goes back to the whole world is a lie. And so when you start peeling away the layers of one lie, you get to another lie. And then you get to another lie. And you get to another lie. And so that's where a lot of this, like, you could just keep going and going and going. But it, it comes down to the fact that I, I think that, again, the false flags, the lies, the propaganda are all leading up to a staged some kind of existential threat, whether it's uh, a, yeah. a meteor, because, dude, I mean, they're talking about asteroids that are within our satellite range mm-hmm. that are coming within the orbit of, like, like inside the orbit of where our satellites travel. That's fucking yeah, crazy. Yeah, they already told us there's a mothership up there somewhere now. Or <laughs> yeah, <crap>. well, <laughs> and what you know what that came from is so funny because you could see the propaganda in action. You have Avi Loeb that simply says, well, a Muamua could be a mothership mm-hmm. dropping down that drops down these, and everybody's like, there's a mothership, and it's dropping yeah. probes. You know, I mean, like, it's the propaganda at work, dude. They take Shit. one little Those thing. Mother balloons are mother balloons. <laughs> dude, uh, uh, so much. <laughs> So much, man. So much. And so it's it's a lot of distress. So I think that we're headed towards a false flag of something like that, either to, you know, get this, because I think they want to move on. I think they want to move on yeah. from Ukraine. I think they want to move on from Russia, but they can't just let Russia take over Ukraine. They also, I think well, there's they... There's stuff there. Yeah, and I think they truly know that they can't keep throwing shit into Ukraine. Eventually, uh, I just don't see that happening. Uh, yeah. But I don't know. We had 20 years of Iraq. Who fucking knows? But yeah, uh, yeah. So I I would say if there's if there's a potential for nukes to get used, I think we're so trigger happy. And when I say we, I mean the fucking CIA is so trigger happy that they are not going to wait for Russia and Putin to do anything. They're going to, they're going to, if, if they really feel like nuke is on the table, uh, then I think that they're going to stage a false flag in which they have a reason to actually drop a nuke on Russia, which is blasting over Ukraine and making it out like it was Russia. And then they're like, look what Russia did. Now we got to go in. Or if that doesn't work, maybe it's a damn mothership that's over. Dude. (laughs) 
It's anybody's <laughs> guess now. It's any. It's so up yeah. in the air of what they could do. I mean, all the technology is lined up so they could completely and totally do a staged alien invasion. I'm I'm 100 convinced of that because we've had a space force up there since Trump announced it, and we know they've been doing that shit for probably 20 years before that. Well, I watched an interview about like this captain from the space force, and he was he's like, what? Totally weird. Like he totally disregarded a lot of stuff. And oh yeah, we just do satellite stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. how did you not detect the freaking weather balloons? Because that's like, not what they're what? doing, dude. And and let me tell no. you something. Here here's here's my my theory on the UFO uh, uh, phenomenon right now, including the balloons and all that. This is our shit. This is all of our stuff. They're talking about right now the balloon, the one balloon that they happen to recover um, is. Like <laughs> is absolute Chinese surveillance and they, oh man, they got so much. They got so much. Dude, give me a fucking break. Give me a break. And and, and then the modern UFO uh, phenomenon you're seeing now where, I mean, zero gravity, uh, not zero gravity, um, anti-gravity, they've been studying that since the 30s. Um, they're, they're, they're coming out with advanced shit. I mean, they've got drones now that can stay in the air forever. Because now they have this sphere of battery charging through uh, through almost like a radio tower that puts out this this wireless charging sphere that this this uh, drone can just fly indefinitely. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what those balloons are. They're pretty much a drone with a giant balloon on them. You know? That's right. Well, in the, in the 1960s, it was like 1958 project. I just read about this project Slingshot. Was it Slingshot? Mm-hmm. Uh, where they uh, they were Mach 10 in a balloon. Dude, mm-hmm. that's over 7,000 miles per hour. Mm-hmm. That's insane in a balloon. Like yeah. it's so there it's to say that that we don't have the technology to do these things that people are show, are saying or seeing mm-hmm. it I think is uh, is uh, naive. Well, I'm with you. I'll, I'll I'll jump on your prediction there. So I I see the same kind of false flag essentially, but I think maybe like going into this uh, UFO premise, they might try to do that if they can't get the war to bust off. That's their final card. They'll go in and say, "Oh, a mothership came down and stopped the nuke from going off," and they'll try to make it so that there's these beings are our saviors and try to create this new antichrist. Yeah. So I, I false, but. dude. I mean, that's that kind of goes uh, to the um, uh, Left Behind series, mm-hmm. which is all based on Revelation and all that. Great series. If you guys, if yeah. you guys, you know, are into like biblical lore, uh, the Left mm-hmm. Behind series is really good because it takes that biblical Revelation lore, like the whole book of Revelation, and turns it mm-hmm. into a fictional story that you can kind of follow along with from a uh, an experiencer's perspective of someone who is experiencing the rapture and shit it's it's pretty good i mean me as someone who's not religious i liked it and and i was like uh i you know i'm i'm definitely not religious but i i found it fascinating because i find the book of revelation fascinating and so they talked about the antichrist and all that shit so super rad but uh but yeah dude uh yeah i mean it's it, what what do you say what do you say when people think that what look i mean i say fuck the government and everybody in it but what do you think <laughs> what do you think about people that jump on this thing of saying that trump is the antichrist Oh, he ain't smart enough to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love it. Great. Immediately, immediately. That was great. Fantastic. <laughs> you got to remember the supposed antichrist is a wolf in sheep's clothing. He yeah. comes in as a prophet, right? Which some people act like Trump is that or whatever, but that's just whatever. That's all. People are too far one way or the other. You exactly. Know? <laughs> yeah. They're all in either way. They're all in. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's not, know. it's not good I to be that way. Great help, but it's one person, right? Yeah. One person. You'd have to have like the whole damn military behind you to do an alternate change like that. So, well, in the intelligence well, agencies that goes well beyond the military, mm-hmm. you know, you'd have to have them in, in on board because they're the ones that really control the country. 
Yeah. Well, I'll have to talk to you, too, more about this off-planet military-industrial complex, too. Dude, we it's, are going to do know. a whole series, man. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. I'm telling you, I'm so excited for where this show is going to go because what we're trying to do, and look, just to let everybody know, like, we're going to try and make this a regular thing with you and me. You know, yeah. try and really yeah. like get because because every time we get together, every time we got together before on the show, I loved having yeah. you on. You always took us in new horizons, and I love it. And and this is no uh, no exception. And so it's just uh, so I uh, you know I'm excited to be able to explore deeper topics that that do take us to the edge of fringe because that's yeah. where the good shit is. You know, it's uh, it's it's on the outer outer edges of the fringe, and people they touch it, but then they're 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 uh, reluctant to just ride that wave, man. You know, and just just ride that wave, catch a gnarly wave, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. So so uh, so are you hopeful? Oh yeah. Are you? Yeah, you have to be. I mean, if you aren't, then. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. It's true. You know, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of bad things. It looks bad, but you got to remember everything looks, you know, worse before the storm, right? Very true. <laughs> there's, Very true. There's a calm and it looks really bad. Then you go through the eye of the storm and you're on your way out. Yep. You know? Very true. So Very there's, there's layers to this that we have to get through essentially. And that's what, yeah, I think everything will be, I mean, there's going to be some bad shit that happens probably. Right. Yeah. There always is. People are pretty dumb a lot of times when it. That's true. Happen. Like we've talked about, right? You know, I do dumb things myself. You know, whatever. You know, almost died on my motorcycle today because a car stopped in front of me. Oh shit, man! Abruptly, you know. Yeah. So then I was like, oh crap! It was early in the morning, but I survived. You know. Yep. yep. Of I made it to my job. It's okay. I'm talking to you now. <laughs> So. Well, and you're right. We're all living on the edge all the time. I mean, anything could yeah. happen at any moment. It goes back yeah. to that whole, you know, live every day as though it's your last and da 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 da. da. But, yeah. you know, it is true. I mean, you know, you have to be, you, it, it's, I, I talked to a lot of, especially in the last, you know, three years, uh, there was a lot of reason. And if you go back even further, people that were looking I into this stuff before that had a lot of reason to be angry too. But there is, there's, a, you can always find reasons to be angry. There's a lot of, you know, uh, you know, false prophets, you know, wolves in sheep's clothing, a lot of liars, thieves, manipulators out there, specifically in government. And, and it is very challenging to have, it can be very challenging to have a positive outlook, but here is one thing that for sure you can look back on history and, and say about the human race. We persevere a hundred percent. You can show that no matter what the world went through, whether it was, you know, world ending cataclysm that potentially wiped out whole civilizations uh, to, yeah. to, uh, you know, everything, politics and, and, and culture clashes and war, everything we're hell bent on destroying each other and everything we are. And yet, and yet, despite all that humanity continues to be like Rubbermaid, baby, we just bounce back. And, yep. and so that's the biggest thing that you can, you can rely on is, and, and the other thing is like, look, when you, when you, Pull, poke your head into the you know digital world that is social media and and all that it is it is nothing but negativity it's a pool of just of just festering uh um negativity and when you put your head in there it's it's okay to look in there it, you need to look you should look and be aware of what's under the surface, but also you need to come up for air occasionally and realize yep. that there is fresh air out there. You walk out your door, chances are, unless you live in a really shitty area, and I feel bad if you do, but I, I'm very fortunate that I don't. I get to step out my door, and I don't deal with all these problems that I see on social media. And so that's what I do is, you know, I look at this stuff. I'm like, what the fuck? And then... <laughs> I step outside and I take a walk and it's peaceful. It's quiet. And I realize like this, where I'm at right here, this is my real world. Mm -hmm. And this is what's going on in the other world that exists at the same time as I do, you know, but I'm mm -hmm. not in it. 
You know, I yeah. put myself in there, but I'm not in it. And there's a difference. But people kind of live these days like the information they're getting out of social media exists in the world that they're residing in right now. And, and that's what can be hard about it. This is a false matrix. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's right. It's a false matrix. So it's, it's hard because, uh, you know, I apologize. I'm texting my son real quick. But uh, <laughs> like I said, it's, you got to stay positive. And, and that's what it's all about. And so, uh, so even though we go dark, it's still out of fun. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Like you said, man, keep an open mind and a positive perspective and we can talk about anything and still make it out the other side. That's right. You know what I mean? Dude, I, I, I frontier like Star Trek, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. It's always going to be scary to talk about things yeah. that might make you uncomfortable, but, uh, but you know, you still you still should go there because these things exist in the world. It's just all there is to it, you know. And knowing is half the battle, right? GI Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Mr. C, do you have anything else to say about this? Do you have anywhere else you want to go with this? I mean, we're going to continue on and and keep, you know, bringing these topics. Do you want to save it for the next one or you do you want to keep yeah, going? Yeah, I think let's save it for the next go around cuz I think we need to talk about kind of We'll branch out into space a little bit more, too. We talked about our immediate supposed surroundings, right? Yeah. Maybe we should dive out further there, too. Of course. That as well. Yeah, dude. I'm. Uh, we're going, baby. We are, like you said, <laughs> we're boldly going where this show has never gone before and maybe some places we right. have. But either way, the terrain is always worth going over again, and it's always fun topics, so that's what we'll do. And we're just praying that maybe we'll meet some cool alien chicks one day too, right? <laughs> Fucking A, dude. I met uh, I met a really cool alien guy named Hermes Oslander of the Scuttle yeah. Scuttlebutt podcast, and he calls himself an alien. And uh, he was a really fun guy to talk to, man. Really fun. Nice. But uh, yeah, he was super cool. But uh, he's he's dead. He's got to he's got to be an alien because he had too good of a personality uh, these days to be an average human. So you awesome. know. I, I think uh, I think me and you got a little bit of alien in us too. Oh you know, yeah, it, it's we just got the uh, other side, the light side, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Exactly. You know, and uh, with all these questions that we ask, the biggest one, the most important one, is what do you all think? That's the big question I want to know. Drop it in the comments. Uh, reach out, as I said earlier in the episode, 208-477-1288. You can text. You can call. You can also email I want to believe 115 at gmail.com. Uh, Mr. C, do you want to give out any links where people can find you, or do you want to stay anonymous? Oh, for now, I'll stay anonymous. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Just show your face. That's all. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> I know. I know. I know what you mean. It's I. I know what you mean, though. Uh, I'm, on, so, I'm on like multiple social media platforms too. I'm, I'm out there too as well. Instagram, and I don't even know what my Instagram name is. Is that bad? <laughs> no, no. I think that I think that shows that you're care, man. <laughs> you have a healthy relationship with Instagram. I think is what yeah, that means. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I, I'm pretty sure that's what that means. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, I know I post weird shit on like Facebook, like funny stuff and positive shit. So good. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah. Good. That's what it's all about, man. Positivity and all that shit, you know, yeah. all that positivity and all that shit. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, as most no. of you know, I don't know if uh, Mr. C knows yet, but as most of you know, if you've been following the show, this is the point where we love to give credit to the people that support this podcast. And they are known as the tin foil militia. These are the members that support this podcast with their monthly donations. And here they are giving their credit because all the credit is due. Here they are, the tin foil militia. I believe I see militia forming tin foil militia. Stop militia. The tin foil militia. I joined the militia, but why would you? What do you think tap water is? It's a gay bomb, baby. Casey Armadilla, Michael Ralston, Rihanna Little, the OG supporter, designer, tinfoil hat wearing, Aaron Rice, Jesse, Jet Life Teague, Michael Benavides, Carlton Turner, Matthew Morfitt, Morgan, Nathan Boldly Gone Higby, and Edwin Everhart. Thank you so much for your everlasting support. You have my loyalty forever. Uh, as well as they are, you can also go to the 
uh, patreon.com slash UFO no podcast sign up and get bonus episodes that I release every week along with these regular episodes that you can find everywhere you find your favorite podcasts uh, but get down get in uh, it's super fun I love these people so much and uh, we're going to be doing the value for value system soon which uh, Mr. C I'll tell you all about that but uh, time talent and treasure that's what it's all about so if you have time to help us out with leads uh, some topics you think we should talk about artwork whatever it is help us out if you have a talent like web design or anything like that that you think could help the show please reach out and of course treasure if you had value in this show whether we make you laugh make you think whatever throw that into a number toss it our way much appreciated everything helps the uh show grow including sharing sharing is caring so take this url spread it like gossip baby uh and that's it so uh for now you could still buy us a romulan ale they're only five bucks the finest colored secretions from the veranac colony Oh, yes, it's beautiful. Uh, you can also uh, direct donation through PayPal. Got that link in there. And uh, But that's it. Dude, that's it. Phenomenal episode. I had so much fun. Uh, Mr. C, are you coming back next week? That's the plan. Dude, that's fuck yeah. This is going to be so much fun. Next week, catch it. Uh, this is going to be next Saturday. Uh, I'm sorry. Next Friday, we're going to shoot for the around the same time, I think. Uh, same bat time. Same, same bat, bat channel. channel. <laughs> uh, we'll be back with uh, some new topics. We're going to space, people. We're going to space. But uh, without further ado, like I always say, stay elevated. Keep your eyes to the skies and watch out for the government. They're shoisty bastards. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> <laughs>